Next, we're going to talk about file formats. As far as data feed file formats go, some of the most popular are comma separated value CSV files or tab delimited plain text files ending in TXT. Then you have XML file, and that stands for extensible markup language, similar to like HTML, hypertext markup language. And then there's JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, and then Excel format, special to Microsoft Excel. With this, I wanted to show you an example bit of data. And if you go to this site here, you can play around with the different data formats. They load the page with some example data here. This is a great tool website that you can enter in data. And then if you need it to output in a certain format, let's say like HTML, it'll do that for you. But what's great about this is that it's showing us the examples of how the data looks in the different formats. So here, JSON, XML, HTML text, markdown, et cetera. So CSV, separated by commas, kind of self-explanatory. But the thing about CSV that you'd want to know is that sometimes what if the value itself has a comma in it? Well, a system, if it didn't know otherwise, it would try to parse that as another value. So to escape the delimiter value inside of the value itself, you can wrap it in quotation marks. So here's an example here where all of the data is wrapped in quotation marks. Now it's excessive. You don't need to wrap a value that does not contain a comma in quotation marks. You could just wrap the values that have commas and the system will know, okay, I need to not parse on a comma value because it's part of the sentence or something like that. And so the CSV concept introduces this idea of escape characters. With that, there's also popular delimiters, like in Europe, they use a semicolon because often their prices use a comma as a, a value rather than a decimal. And then there's pipe delimited. So with delimiters, it could be done on a lot of uh, character values, but the most common is a, a comma. And then you'd have a tab delimited file. That helps solve the problem of the comma being parsed and escaping commas, but it could be either way. Every new row in that data file is represented by a new row character, which is often not rendered, but to the computer reading the data, it knows that there's a new row. And so like a notepad program would show you the data knowing that this data contains new rows so that this row is showing new rows. Uh, and that's how the computer would read it. Now, if we go to XML and JSON, there's this new concept of a minified version so here, this is a, like a pretty print version for us to read the data. And I'm going to go into the elements of both of these formats. But there's a concept that the computer doesn't need this to be formatted to read it. It can read it just without the spaces. So a computer can be given a minified version, and it saves on space for that file. But it's really difficult for a human to read it in this format. So what happens is this type of language can be formatted for us to read it. Now with XML, there are different parts to the formatting and often it's dependent on a schema. So a channel like Walmart could have one schema that they expect to read the data in a certain order and specific names of the elements versus Amazon versus Google, et cetera. So inside of these carrot alligator characters are elements and those elements uh, have definitions of data. So here, there's a list of customers, and inside those customers, we have the attributes, ID, name, age, and gender. So going back up to our example table, we have our column headers, ID, name, and age, and gender. And just this data table, we don't know that it's customers or a list of customers, uh, but XML and JSON can tell us that type of information without actually being values in the data table itself. And so with JSON, the same concept, there's a minified and unminified version. So there's the human readable version, and then it can be stripped down to a computer readable version that's more lightweight. With JSON, it's the same concept. Here, there's a, an array or a list of customers, and each one is represented by properties and values, like a name and key value pair. So here, JSON has uh, become more popular over the years uh, because of the prevalence of the use of JavaScript. XML was very popular in the 90s, uh, and it still is commonly used, but it's becoming less popular or less chosen first than JSON. So 
when you start to work with APIs, the data, instead of it being a CSV text file, can be sent as JSON or XML because the data itself, the structure can be more organized and standardized and more complex and contain more values and associations and stuff. Then we have Excel. XLS files are not very common as data feed files, although you could extrapolate data from them. Excel is different because those files, uh, instead of it being plain text files, they are binary files, so they can contain complex data like images, styling, format, formulas, stuff like that. So here's an example of the same data table, but it has colors and font styling, as well as a chart on screen. And an XLS file can contain all of that stuff. So it's often used for business cases and communicating analysis of the data, but it's not often used as a data feed format. And since we're talking about files, you're going to run across compression. Channels often may favor or accept compressed files. And when you're dealing with big files, it can really help with transmission speed and stuff like that. Some files can be one-tenth the size that they were originally. So you're going to run across that. And obviously, if you have a, a zipped file, you got to unzip it. And there are programs to help you do so.